That's for another day. I, I it'd be a whole other day. I will. I'm going to teach my 6011 students this week, and I'll record it and I'll make it available to you guys. The recording. It is worth learning. Like Logan, are you are you are you a convert to Grace. QT Grace? Yes. Yeah, Pat, you a, you a QT Grace convert? Is it, is it free? It is free. That is why we use it in my group. Origin is a, a, a as good a software, maybe even a little bit better, but it is not free. So we use QT Grace because it's free and because now it's what I'm used to, and I quite like it. it's really customizable. Like if I go to QT Grace. I can double click it and we have for colors the Sparks approved palette of colors which you can make yourself. <laughs> um, uh, so you can make it as customizable as you want and uh, that's one reason why I use it. Okay. That said, uh, so now this is recording, how do you select like all the yellow lines if I wanted to move them up and down, like maybe I'm going to run something else and I want to insert it in there or maybe I want to move one just for whatever reason so you can draw contrast or so you have room to type some text in there. The way to do it is you come here and select and you do the select all tool and then select all then go to same and there's lots of different things. You can select it by stroke weight except everything in here has got the same stroke weight. That means thickness of line so that's not what we want. So instead go here and select do select same appearance and that's going to grab a bunch of qualities like stroke, color, lots of different things all together and that does a really good job and then you can, you can move this right. You could hold down shift so it takes bigger steps at a time and do left and right. right? You can do that if you want or you could go up and down. And that's a really nice way to organize your data. You could also, once it's in this point, you could right click it and make a group out of it. Um, ben, where do you group things? Arrange. Oh, arrange. No? Nope. Nope. There just, is a way to group. Uh, just left click on it. Yeah, that's yeah. what I did. There is a, you somehow you can group, group this. Object. Um, yeah, if not, it's object. You can definitely group it's up there at the top. Right there. You can group it though. Once it's grouped, you can do all sorts of things, but it's easier to manage. You can assign it to different layers, which Ben will be showing us, because I never remember how to work with layers, even though it's like basic. Ben will show us how to do that. But so I wanted to point this out that it's really easy to do. You can add these lines. Like I wanted to talk about the different bonding that's going on. So you can add different lines. That's really easy to do. Obviously, you can draw whatever you want on these things. And its default is going to be whatever I used last time. But if you don't like that dotted line, it's really easy to come over here to the stroke tab where you can change aspects of the stroke. I can get rid of the dashed line, for example, make it solid. If I want that to be like a really massively thick line, you can do it. All sorts of really easy to use tools. If you want to add an arrowhead, like to make an arrow pointing at something, it's really easy to add an arrow. Now, what if like you want like a curved arrow, like you want to point to this exact peak, but you don't want it to be straight. First off, that looks ridiculous, right? <laughs> you can change that though. You can take that from 100% down to say 30. It still looks kind of ridiculous because the stroke I've got is so thick on it, but whatever. It, now, what if we want to make that a curved line? How do we do that? So how I would do it, I would, let's see, can you actually, I'm sure you can modify it, one that already exists. Here's how I would do it though. I don't normally do it this way. I would delete it out and I'd start over with this thing and I'd start by drawing, actually let me do this. You can hold that down. If you hold it down, it'll go to arc tool. This is probably not the best way to do it. This is how I do it. Like I said, I am not a pro. I do this, so now you've got your line, then I stick an arrowhead on it, and then you can modify it. Again, <laughs> that looks absurd because we have monstrous like stroke on this thing. But then what's great, you go to this small select tool and you can modify it, right? If you want to move it like here, you could do that. Or maybe you, your thing needs to be arranged differently such that you have an arrow that does, oops, like that. Your arrow could do that sort of thing. Like it's really, really easy to edit. I feel like I'm like, this is like, you all know this stuff. If this is not useful, we can move on. But it's really, really not that scary and hard to use Illustrator. So if you've never used it before, it's really not that bad. Yeah, Christian? Yeah, I went from never having oh, yeah. to make my whole senior poster. And his looked great. It was really well done, right? So this isn't bad. A um, couple other things I want to show you. Let's say you've got like a great big image. Like you can see that blue box hovering over these things. The image that this came from Logan's work um, was much larger than this. It was from a video capture, and I actually captured a couple small small pieces of it because I wanted to make this diagram that showed you know at point in time what's happening here. So I really wanted to like select out just the small piece piece there. That's called masking. It's really easy to do. So quick example. Okay. That's sick. I didn't know you got it to work. It works really well. Oh my god! So let's say I just I just screen kept this from my Instagram page, right? And I want to just have the picture of my sister being awesome. So how do you do that? You can crop in all that, but the, maybe one of the easiest ways come over here, make the shape that you want. So I'm just gonna put it over the picture, roughly where I want it, right? Then I'm gonna come out here, do our select tool, grab the whole thing. So now I've got both objects, the bigger picture and the box on top of it, and hit Control Seven. 
and it'll it'll mask it just to that. Or you this, could come up here to the clipping mask. Yeah. You can also you could go to, click and create clipping mask. Yeah. I'm sorry, Sparks. Yeah, no, absolutely. Or go up to object and come down here to clipping mask and do the exact same thing and it'll mask it, right? Yeah. Which is a nice way to maybe have some aspect of what you're working on. And then one or two other things I want to show you guys in Illustrator, it's easy to make diagrams, like schematics. Like I was trying to do for Ben's research, I was making this for a grant that we wrote. And we want to show that this bubbles up and there was not like a pre-made shape for like bubble, <laughs> right? So we need to make it ourselves. So how do you make a, a custom shape like that? It's not so bad. Uh, you can come over here where I did a palette where I was starting these things. There's this tool right here, which is your shape builder tool. And if you have a, uh, I don't know if it's for all versions of this, the version I've got, you can actually just draw these things. I can just draw like, oh wait, is that working? Do I have to tell it I'm doing drawing mode? Huh. It was just doing it, no it's not. Anyways, you can, that's odd. Well, you can always do it this way. You can take your lines, right? Say you want this thing, you want one of those, you want one of those, right? That's your shape. But right now that's a bunch of individual lines. Like how would you color that in, right? If you go like, again, this is like your stroke color right here. I can change the stroke color easy enough. I can make those lines blue. But how do I like color those in? If I just go like this, I don't think this is going to work. Yeah, it's going to do weird stuff, right? It's not coloring in correctly because I haven't made that a shape yet. So let's undo that. What we need to do is go and hit shape builder on this thing. And voila, now you see it's like fillable and I can fill it in with shapes. Uh, I think I clicked off of it. Let's try that again. Yeah, there you go. Right. So that is how you make custom shapes. Really not hard there, that hard to do. Once you learn how to, like the line tool works and how you can, again, using the direct select, how you can grab these little aspects of it and move them around. Or let's say you want like another one, you come down here to your point selector, add another anchor point. Right. If I wanted to, I could click another point right there. And then I could direct select that point and move. Oops, just missed it. However you want, right? It's really not so bad if you tinker with it a little bit. And the pre-built shapes are nice to start with. Things like circles are not bad to start with because you see they're just consisting of four points. And then each one of those points has a curvature associated with it. Uh, maybe not. I think I'm wrong. Oh, yeah, you can. Anyways. OK, so I think that's all that I had for you guys. I'm going to turn it over to Ben. So I can um, just Make multiple pages and create my own PowerPoint, essentially. So that is a different tool. That's this Illustrator's not the best tool for that. You could if you wanted. That's not what I would do. Um, you certainly could, actually. You could. I think what I do for Illustrator is I make individual objects and then I embed them in other things, right? So I actually still use PowerPoint when I give my presentations. I just make the figures ahead of time, right? So for example, on this one, right? The data for our DSC looked like this. This was as it spit it out, it was spat out from the machine. Uh, and then I put it in Kitty Grace and plotted it, but I still want to like move things around because it's a little bit messy. So to me, I was trying again to see something in the data. And before he's even ready to present this, it's just easier for me when I can see it arranged in a different way. I just grab those data sets and move them around. And then you can see there's actually like this steady change and the melting point of this material. Uh, it's, it's just a very, very useful tool to learn how. So if you haven't delved into Illustrator, I can't recommend it enough because everything that I showed you is a really easy Google way. And if there's something else you want to do that you don't know how to do just yet, it's also a really easy thing to Google. And then you can make nice things like a, we pull up one last thing, I'll turn over to Ben. Um, Taylor Sparks, ceramic prop and ETL. Like one of my grants required, and they sprung this on me like really quick, they're like, hey, by the way, you have to have a diagram, a schematic for your technology, and we need it by like this afternoon. It's like, yeah. I don't have like, what am I gonna pay like a, an illustrator to do this for me? So no, you just go and uh, in Illustrator, you start drawing it yourself and you can make really high quality objects. Yeah, like this one, right? So I made that in just not very long. And it was like a nice way to talk about a complex project of like, you've got coal, it has naturally occurring cleats, but we wanna make that bigger. So like I'm literally just grabbing this thing, I'm rotating it, which then we'll show you how to do some of that stuff. Filled it with a bunch of little circles ripping the prop in. You can, it's really easy to make a complex thing without being like a pro. Yeah, there's my bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> this was an afternoon of panicky work. That was the best I could do, right? But it's pretty easy to make, I don't know, it looks like a, a legit schematic that you see somewhere and it's not hard to make. It's really easy to make that. Yeah? Okay, any questions? Yeah, Ben, Ben's gonna take over. Okay. Do we have an HDMI? Ben yet, or Jeff, do oh, you have HDMI? I've got one, okay.
Yeah. Where we got one. Perfect. HDMI to VGA. Well, well, this takes this oh, takes HDMI. HDMI. Sweet. Does anybody? I mean, I, I can go. I'm gonna pull up some of my figures and go through how I made them and stuff. But does anybody have uh, like a figure in mind?